Mr. Underwood. And then Tony Ryan. If you would uh, get ready to speak, please, Mr. Ryan. Um, thank you for allowing me to testify. Um, I'm here to oppose the bill. Um, Article 2A of the New Hampshire Constitution clearly states that all persons have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves, their families, their property, and the state. It doesn't say some persons. It doesn't say approved persons. It doesn't say persons who don't scare us. It says all persons. A right for which we have to ask permission isn't a right at all. And so the first point, I think, that has to be made regarding this bill is that it takes the wrong approach towards the goal sought by its sponsors. The right approach would be to amend the New Hampshire Constitution to declare that not all persons have the right to defend themselves or that self-defense is a privilege or perhaps to change the definition of persons to something like persons we like. But until such a change has been made, any fifth grader can see that this bill conflicts with the New Hampshire Constitution. It takes a constitutional scholar to miss that. <laughs> Clearly, the sponsors of the bill don't feel they need to go to the trouble of amending the Constitution. And that's partly because, as we all know, many judges would be happy to tap dance around any constitutional challenge by changing the meanings of words like all, by creating balancing tests of thin air and so on. But I urge the committee to consider a couple of deeper, less obvious consequences, not just of passing a bill like this, but of even bringing it up for consideration. The first is that a bill like this undermines respect for the very rule of law itself. After all, if the legislature isn't going to respect the limits placed on it by the New Hampshire Constitution, why should individuals respect any limits placed on them by that legislature? whether regarding guns or schools or traffic laws or anything else. If we're gonna disregard the big rules, why pay any attention to the smaller ones? For that matter, if words like all and person no longer mean what they've meant for centuries, then why should we pretend that laws, which are made of words, mean anything at all? In other words, if you can behave as if all doesn't mean all, why can't I behave as if not doesn't mean not? The second thing is that one of the things that all persons have the right to defend themselves against is their own government. When, in the words of Article 10, the ends of government are perverted, the people have not just the right, but the duty to reform or replace that government, something that might require the use of force it's for this reason that an explicit right of revolution is recognized by the New Hampshire Constitution. And it's for this reason that it is absurd to give a government you may someday have to fight any say at all over what arms you have. And this bill does pervert the ends of government by seeking to force people to make this choice. You can be free or you can obey the law, but not both. So the great irony here is that the very existence of this bill, and others like it, is the strongest argument for why, even if passed, they should simply be ignored, even though that would make felons out of people who are harming no one, but who simply decline to let the fears of a few undermine the freedom of all. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you for your testimony, Representative McNamara. In my briefcase, I carry a copy of the state constitution with me at all times, and I notice the chapter uh, which comes next, you uh, refer to Article 2A. Article 3 states, when men enter into a state of society, they surrender up some of their natural rights to that society in order to ensure the protection of others, and without such an equivalent, the surrender is void, so that we can have rules and we have freedoms, but sometimes they come together. The same document also says that there are certain rights that cannot be given up because no equivalent can be given for them. And I would argue that this is one of those. Thank you for your comments. And Mr. Ryan, uh, Tony Ryan, 